How's it going, everybody? This is Brian Alvarez here on the Bagpipe Report. I am replacing whatever his name is that hosts this show, Blake, this week. There were a lot of complaints about Mr. Norton, the way he looked around at the set, what he did with his hands. So, I am the new host. Hey, Brian, are good to go? Oh! <clears throat> What's up? Hey, how are you? Oh, it is so good to be over back here home in Washington. It's been a really rough couple of weeks. Two weeks ago, Johnny Storm tied me up to a chair. You don't want to know what happened off the air. Last week, Cole Cabana tried to take the thing over. I had to actually call in like he had a mail order bride downstairs. It's good to be back where... Wow, can, well, can... good. I was keeping your seat warm. I poured you a glass of water. I'm ready to go. That's some great water. It's good to be back with some friends. Hey everybody, this is a Bag Fight Report. Get ready. Okay, good evening everybody. This is a Bagpipe Report and tonight we are live from Washington. Sitting to my left is Brian Alvarez, editor of the Figure 4 <laughs> Weekly Newsletter. How are you doing this week, Brian? Good. Good stuff. We're going to kick it off talking about WWE is right now in England. They're right around where you guys are. They're doing Raw, SmackDown this week. Uh, both rosters are over in that part of the world. This is the biggest tour that WWE has ever <laughs> done. I mean, they've never done back-to-back -back television tapings in another country like this before. If this works out, do you see them expanding further, or is this just a one-time deal? Um, well, it's already worked out, so they're gonna they'll do it again. Basically, uh, business is down in the U.S. And whenever it's down in the U.S., you can go overseas and make a lot of money. Yeah. Like WCW in the dying days went to Australia when they were. That's right. That's right. Two thousand. They were yeah. doing. Uh, you know, I think they did eight hundred and forty for a thunder taping. Right. And then they went to Australia and just did huge business. Yeah, giant domes and everything. <clears throat> yeah, of course, because it's so underexposed over there comparatively. And uh, this. Uh, you know, business is down domestically, but I think this is one of their biggest weeks in history as far as right making money touring. So it's been a huge success, and they'll go back. Oh, what are the ups and the downs of doing these tours? Obviously, it's tough on the wrestlers because they've got the jet lag. They got to go a great distance there and back. WWE, uh, they can't obviously send wrestlers home for a day if they don't have a show. They have to plan things very carefully. Uh, what are the plus and the minus points? Obviously, the biggest plus is that you get fans that are underexposed to the product and be really into it. Is it tough financially, though, to, to figure everything out to make sure that it makes the kind of money that it has the potential to? Uh, the biggest problem is the jet lag. Mm -hmm. Because for, for a lot of the wrestlers, like, you know, there are a lot of downsides to going overseas and touring, like the jet lag and everything. But you're yeah. also going from working in front of a small crowd doing a house show mm -hmm. to this huge crowd that goes crazy for every single thing you do. Yeah. So that kind of, you know, that kind of makes up for any other problems. Right. But, like, right. you know, the other issue is there's no communication. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, um, and there's no communication, like, throughout the entire company. Because right. Carly Cologne was supposed to uh, work the Ohio Valley tapings mm -hmm. uh, last week, and he was in England. Mm -hmm. And they hadn't alerted Jim Cornette that he oh was gosh. leaving the country. <clears throat> oh, so gosh. that screwed up tapings. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like, there are way more benefits to, to negatives as yeah, far as yeah, for yeah. the guys. Well, now, shortly after they come back, they got Taboo Tuesday coming up. Uh, start off as uh, the, the great idea, Taboo Tuesday. This is our interactive pay-per-view. It's going to change the way that business happens, takes place forever. And of course, I mean, right from the outset, we're thinking they have no ideas. They have no direction. So just ask the fans and do whatever they say, which, I mean, isn't that bad an idea in times of trouble. Uh, only fans really haven't had the chance to actually create this pay-per-view. I want to start with the main event with you. Um, last Monday night on Raw, they had Chris Jericho versus Triple H, which many of us, including you and I, to, to a degree, believed might have been the match for Taboo Tuesday, but they never even gave fans the option. Yeah. Uh, do you think, uh, like, the, the fan on the street right now, we talked about this last week, and we've had another week to let it develop. Do you think the fan on the street is actually getting interested, or is this pay-per-view just going to completely bomb? Well, there's like a... There's a weird kind of buzz for this pay-per-view, just because it's like a, it's like a, a first-time deal yeah, where they yeah. can actually choose. And because, of course, we won't even know until the night of the show who's wrestling. Yeah, and it's not yeah. even the night of the show. It's like during the show. You can mm -hmm. still vote during the show. So they yeah. have to take like the 
the uh, you know the three guys for the main event that are candidates and have a, a match for each guy. Yeah. And then you know five minutes before bell time they just go well it's you. And yeah. You two, sorry. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> but uh, there there's a weird kind of buzz for it, but uh, you know at the same time it's like I don't know if that buzz is going to translate into people actually, actually buying wanting the show. to buy the show. Yeah. yeah. Especially because like you know Tuesday night. I understand that on Sunday people work the next day, mm-hmm. but on Tuesday, not only do they work the next day, but they work that day. Yeah. And, you know, for West Coast viewers, they're driving home from work at 5 o'clock when the pay-per-view That's starts. That's right. It starts 5 p.m. So, yeah. you know, you're alienating uh, an entire coast. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and then the matches, it's like, you know, you get three choices, and you're giving fans three choices of matches. Actually, two choices, because there's the edge mm-hmm. factor, but nobody wants to see edge. No. So it's like, no. you're either giving them Benoit... Or Orton, and they've seen those matches a hundred times. Yeah, it's nothing against either guy. Fans, it's just that fans want to see somebody different. Yeah, and they're not getting that option. So, yeah. uh, women's title match. It's battle royale for the women's title. It's so, some sort of thing where the fans get to choose what they wear. <sighs> yes, people are going to pay thirty four ninety five because they didn't buy the Playboys to see them naked. Instead, they're going to choose what slightly revealing thing they can see pretty much any week on Raw anyway. The mind boggles. Um, women's Championship pretty much means nothing at this point. Yeah. Um, and the sad thing I find is that whenever you put a title up for grabs in, I mean, I'm going I'm to exclude the Royal Rumble 92 from recent history here, but, but uh, whenever you put the title up for grabs in a battle royale, royale situation, it cheapens the belt. So, I mean, if the belt was held up, that's not a great option. A tournament would be a decent mm-hmm. option. It's not a great option. The belt is, isn't even held up. It's just a battle royale. That's all it is. Yeah. I mean, there's a million things they could do. They could have done a battle royale and the winner, you know, mm-hmm. faces the women's champion or whatever. But I, I can't even compare it to 92 because that's like a totally yeah. like a totally different type of deal. But yeah. for the yeah. women's title, it's like it doesn't even matter. So they can do whatever they want. They could do beach volleyball and the winner gets the belt because yeah. it means nothing. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else we got? Oh, God. We got Christy and Carmella. Um, I don't think I even want to broach that subject. Bischoff versus Eugene. I feel really bad for Eric Bischoff. Not because... I mean, I don't know him personally, but I think he's a really good character. I think he's a really good heel. We we don't need a heel GM right now. We shouldn't have any heel GMs right now. They've been done to death. You have to wait 10 years, but... He's a good heel GM, and all they do is have him get beaten up by Steve Austin or urinated on by someone else or, or have Regal piss in his tea or whatever it is just because he used to run WCW. And then every six months, Vince McMahon comes out on Raw and says, that's why I'm not working for WCW. Uh, is this just, I mean, is there any more th- to this match than simply having Bischoff lose and have his head shaved or something like that? Well, the thing with Bischoff is it's not even so much that he ran WCW. Mm-hmm. It's more the fact that he ran WCW and everyone still hates him. Like, he is a truly hated man. Yeah. When yeah. I was in, uh, I went up for Kelowna and some other uh, taping and I snuck in the back and uh, Eric just, you know, he was he was always alone, mm-hmm. always drinking his coffee and he's just wandering aimlessly mm-hmm. because nobody talked to him mm-hmm. because he, he's, he's really a hated guy. Mm-hmm. And I, and it's like every every six months something has to be done to humiliate this man. Yeah. And uh, this time obviously they want to shave his head because they're pushing that one the hardest yeah. of all. Yeah. So yeah. you know he'll get his head shaved and Vince will have a good laugh and he'll be GM again and then six months down the road he'll have to do a tuxedo match or something. For for, for the worst mm-hmm. reasons possible, I'm actually kind of digging Kane more than anything on Raw right now. Mm-hmm. And I mean I I hate to say that because it almost in some way justifies the putrid horrible crap that we've had to put up with for months now. Mm-hmm. Um he's facing uh this uh Kaniski fellow who I know I know nothing about on the pay-per-view. I have to admit I just you know I didn't even know he's showing up. He's from Ohio Valley you were telling us last week. Yeah, Gene Snitsky uh he uh he's been in Ohio Valley for about 6 weeks and uh as far as like you know the guys in the company that are ready to move up, he's at the, the bottom of the list, like the right. very bottom. Right. But he's Gene Snitsky. He's tall. And so they brought him up. He has big arms. He's Gene Snitsky. Right. After you've watched Gene Snitsky for a while, you're like, okay, I know why they brought him up, because he's just Gene, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they brought him up, and uh, <clears throat> uh, he's totally not ready, but right. he's, there's something about, like, Car- Carlos Colon, or Carlito, he wasn't ready either. Right. And they brought him up and put the belt on him on SmackDown or whatever. But, like, you know, Gene has this weird thing, this mm-hmm. weird charisma, mm-hmm. where I can almost see him getting over. But uh, mm-hmm. I think the thing with Kane is, like, he's... If Kane just wrestled 
and had regular programs, I think people would be bored with him. Yeah. And I think part of it is like... It has to be the most obscure crap. Well, yeah, he's put in the stupidest things, yeah. and he's able to rise above them. Yeah. And so you watch it, and you're like, I don't mind Kane. <laughs> like, I would have to be watching something so horrible right now if it weren't for Kane. Right. Like, Kane saves it, you know what I mean? Right, right. So, I think that's part of his appeal. You know, I don't want to get off on a, a, a big rant here, but, well, maybe I do. Um, they've been trying to make wrestling logical these last few years, and the biggest example of that is the, the developmental territories, right? I'm, I'm talking about the, you're talking about guys coming out from OVW, all sure. that. Uh, I mean, something that's occurred to me quite, quite again and again and again and again and again, is that you can take a good wrestler who's been wrestling for five or ten years, send him down to OVW, and if there's things he doesn't know, he can learn them. Mm -hmm. But if he's gone as far as he can go, that's all there is. And some guys, you know, you mentioned that X Factor that Gene apparently may have, because I've only seen sure. him a couple of weeks now. I mean, some guys have it when they get in the ring, and they, they can't wrestle, they can't work, whatever. It doesn't matter, they have it, mm -hmm. you know? Like Dusty Rose, for example, people like these days, I can imagine if Dusty was coming up the ranks, people would be going, oh my god, he can't work, he's got no work rate, but he's Dusty Rhodes, you know? Yeah. He's got that X Factor. Uh, is WWE ever going to go back to because we were talking to Gangrel last week saying about you got all these great bodies coming up but nobody's actually paying attention to that X Factor and that's what sells tickets and we've got so many of these Gene characters coming up now if he sells tickets they'll be lucky but is anyone in the company right now looking for you know this guy is interesting I don't know why but I'm watching him he's, he's not wrestling well but I, I, I would tune in to watch that person <clears throat> I almost lost you when you were talking about the logical storylines over the last few years or whatever, <laughs> or the logic they're trying to put into it. But mm -hmm. the thing is, like, what we see and what Vince sees are two completely different things. Go back to the Albert Big Show examples, in, in a way. Yeah, I mean, it's like, they are looking for an X Factor. Mm -hmm. And they've seen many of them. Mm -hmm. Gene Snitsky, mm -hmm. Carlito Colon. <laughs> all those guys they see as having the X Factor, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. I think the big thing on the internet now is that uh, John Laurinaitis uh, brought Kenzo Suzuki up, and he's his personal protege or whatever, but uh, it was actually Vince. Really? Vince saw him in a dark match and, and said, I don't want that guy. Really? Kenzo Suzuki, who's like, he's Kenzo Suzuki, but uh, <laughs> Vince saw <laughs> Kenzo Suzuki and was like, that guy has it. Yeah. Or is anybody who's ever seen Kenzo Suzuki work? No, he doesn't have it. Right. So, uh, you know, it's not that they're not looking. It's just that their opinions seem yeah, to maybe be jaded over time. Yeah, they're looking for something completely different. Like, we were talking, uh, uh, Samoa Joe was on our show tonight. Right. And, uh, you know, as far as, like, the indies go, he's, you know, he's really good. Mm. And, you know, most anybody who watches Ring of Honor and everything has seen him, his work would go, get him. Yeah. But WWE hasn't. Mm -hmm. You know, they've, they've talked to him a few times. And in fact, he said the last time he talked to him was when he was in UPW. Really? Think about how long ago that That's was. like four years ago or something yeah. like that. So yeah. it's like, they see something completely different. Right. And like like AJ Styles, they saw um, a short guy that did a lot of flips that they wanted to send to Ohio Valley. That's right. all they saw out of him. Right. And uh, so he had to go to TNA or whatever. Right. And, or he chose to go to TNA. But yeah, they, they have a different idea of what they want. Than, right. Well, speaking of what they want, uh, a lot of talk this week has been about uh, Ric Flair's comments on Raw about making virgins bleed, which is, you know, that's it, it's, it's sure. I suppose, talent. I, I don't know what it is. But anyway, apparently Vince McMahon is very angry about it. Uh, is that the case? Uh, he was irate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that, uh, I think part of it was because there may have been people in the crowd that he didn't want to hear the making virgins bleed comment a lot like advertisers yeah uh, I, right. I can't remember who was there but there was somebody there that that, that was what really set him off it right. wasn't it wasn't so much do, i mean do you think it was directed at flair or he was just angry because it happened oh he was mad at flair right well i mean this is the problem though, so, i mean this is the guy who his daughter was was kidnapped by the undertaker she was raped by dx um his son-in-law uh raped the the corpse of uh katie vick on television and, and look at the diva segment yeah, oh, God. The Diva segment, you know, they said things that... And, like, Hunter was yeah. upset about that one because, you know, uh, he was upset that, you know, these women who weren't even performers yeah. can use this language, and yeah. I can't. And it, it's just, <laughs> you know, Vince Vince loved it, though. Right. But he hated Flair's thing because of who was there. I think that was the biggest issue of everything. 
Right. Do, do you think it's kind of a situation where, where Flair just sort of got in on his game face that particular night? I, I take you're meant to, uh, for everybody who's watching, pass by, you know, the writers. Is it okay to say that I make virgins bleed? You know, before yeah. you go out there and you do it and they you go, oh, so. you know what? There's an advertiser in the crowd tonight, you know? Maybe you should wait till next week. Yeah. And then the week after you can, you know, kill Stephanie and rape her corpse, you know? But this week we shouldn't do that. You well, know? like, the thing is with Flair, Flair's cuts so many millions of promos or however many he's cut and it's not like he's writing scripts for everyone so when you're Ric Flair and you get out there you just you know whatever comes to you comes to you and that yeah. came to him and, yeah. but you also have to understand that, like Vince Vince is he's just weird like <laughs> he didn't want Ric Flair to say woo why? he just didn't like it really? Because I don't like that it's pretty over yeah, yeah. but he just banned it he didn't like it so Speaking of things Vince doesn't like, um, I, there's a report again circulating the internet about Pat Patterson being put on the road to see what's not clicking with the Raw brand, and about him saying, you know what, there's a little bit too much emphasis on this Triple H character, it might be costing the rest of the locker room. Uh, is that true? Was, was Pat Patterson out on the road, and did he come to that conclusion? Pat Patterson said something, I'm not sure exactly what it was, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, part of it might be that Pat is just... He doesn't like the entire direction of the company. Right. Because, uh, I mean, he's been with the company longer than almost anybody. Mm. And of all the people to have a brain mm -hmm. and know what you can't say, mm. you'd think that Pat Patterson would be one of them. Right. And if you want to keep your job, you don't go, there's too much emphasis on that Triple H. That, that, that son-in-law of yours, he's, uh, uh, he's not, not quite the bee's knees, the yeah. situation. So yeah. I, I think, you know, to, to me, unless Pat Patterson has totally lost his mind... The only way I can explain it is he's, he's ready to retire. Yeah, he's bucking, because, to, he's bucking to go out on a positive note. You know, yeah. hey, that Pat Patterson, he said what the deal was, and, you know, it's all good stuff. So, uh, you know. Yeah. So, okay, let's, uh, one more question got for you now. Uh, this coming week, they're back in, uh, back in the States. Uh, they're off the European tour. Are the guys going to be tired? Apparently, Charlie Haas injured his leg on the tour. Uh, Shawn Michaels is coming off the tour a bit banged up. Apparently, didn't work too much last night. Um, is that going to have an effect on the pay-per-view, or are we all good to go? Uh, Charlie Haas. Charlie Haas. I heard he, that he heard... Well, he's SmackDown, so that'll have no impact. Yeah, of course. I was confused. I thought he might have jumped ship, and I was unaware of it. Oh, well, these point. days, watch Raw on Monday. You never know what's going to happen. You never do. No, I mean, there's, you know, people get banged up all the time, but, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Michaels... Michaels has worked with a lot worse injuries than a banged up knee. I was going to say. You except know, except you know. with Sid... In which he lost his smile and had to vacate the title. But uh, that's that's a tough one, though. You know. It's... Sure. You know his his heart wasn't in it. But when, I mean, when he wants to work, he'll work with whatever injury. So I'm not concerned about that. But yeah. they'll be tired. But there have been a million shows where you know. The, the, the guy, only guys... one I really worry about actually is Ric Flair because I seem to remember like the last two overseas tours they did. He came back with jet lag and just scared me in the ring. Really. Like taking all the weird backdrops on his side and everything like that. Really. So, yeah. Really. Okay, well, that'll be interesting. Uh, before I let you go now, uh, I want to take a quick look here at NWA TNA. It's been a pretty slow week. Has there been any real updates as to the November 7th pay-per-view? I mean, we were talking last week how uh, Jeff Hardy pulled a no-show on the Impact tapings. I haven't heard anything more on the situation. Uh, nothing new has come out like, you know, he, he got run over or his dog was abducted, whatever it was. I haven't heard anything come out. Um, uh, who are you leaning towards at this point for the pay-per-view? Because he's through to the next round of the tournament. Uh, we're talking pretty much about Jeff Hardy and Monty Brown. And am I wrong? Are they the two lead contenders at this point? Yeah, um, I actually haven't even watched Impact yet. Really? So, uh, but yeah, uh, I, I think it's going to be Monty Brown just from the way, if you like, look at the booking of TV and it's like Monty Brown or Jeff Hardy and I don't think they trust Jeff Hardy. So. Uh, that that might have been the straw that broke the camel's back, that one show. Yeah. yeah. But the other yeah. thing is like, you know, he no-showed and it was, he just wasn't there. Yeah. And it wasn't a big really a big news story so it, I'm sure it was just you know it wasn't a serious issue so I think it'll probably be Monty it. Brown but the thing is like will anyone care no matter who it is that's like my big thing and I don't think anyone does so that's the concern do you think there's any chance at all that I mean if they come like a month from the pay-per-view or something like that and they're realizing you know people are not interested this is not gonna start a bang that they could hot shot something you know even have someone like uh, Kevin Nash or Scott Hall come in and hot shot them into the title picture just because I mean don't get me wrong I'm not saying you should put, push these guys at this point uh, I don't think it would be a sound move but they need something to make you go, oh, that pay-per-view, i got to buy that and see... Yeah. You know. I mean, they could try, but, like, I don't think they have a handle on, you know, what the buzz is about their own product. Right. Because if they did, there wouldn't be Jeff Jaren on top. 
Right. So I, th- I think that, um, you know, as the pay-per-view draws near, they're just going to do what they do and hope for the best. Mm-hmm. I actually think that this pay-per-view is going to do all right. Because really? I think, like, a lot of the times when they've built up to a big show, mm-hmm. they've done an okay number. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people that didn't watch every week... Would come in for that big one. Or give them another chance or whatever. And I think that this will be, like, you know, this will get all the regular pay-per-view buyers. And I think because it's the first monthly one. Right. All those people that gave up... Are they, gonna, they'll, they'll give it one more shot. Yeah, they'll give it one more shot. So okay. I... In fact, Dave asked me a prediction today, and I predicted 35,000 buys. That's not great. But which it's, is horrible. But yeah. if they got 35,000 buys, they would be celebrating. They, they, they would be. It would be above expectations. It would be way above. Right, right, right. Way right. above. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. That is us. it from Seattle, from Blake, and from Brian Alvarez from the Figure 4 Weekly Newsletter. Check it out at WrestlingObserver.com. We're going to slide on back to the studio and finish up with part two of our interview with the Hopperbull. Colt Cabana. You guys take care. And now it is time for part two. We shall rejoin our conversation with the very entertaining and controversial Colt Cabana. Now, you touched on the Second City Saints. Uh, You and CM Punk, when did you guys start working together? You've been great partners and great rivals. We trained together um, back in Chicago. Mm Mm-hmm. And we both we were we both were guys that wanted to go St. Louis, you know, Minnesota, all around the country, just being known as wrestlers, and and I think that helped us a lot as kind of being as a tandem, because mm-hmm. um, you'd always hear Coco Man and CM Punk, and you'd always hear us together to different places, and all and people started taking notice, and right. then they started watching us wrestle, and you know, hopefully they were impressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we started training together. So we, we've known each other throughout our whole wrestling. Uh, uh, careers, and then when you know when we got the call, you know when we went up to Ring of Honor, you know I think they wanted to try to dabble and you know maybe him going doing this, him going me going doing that, but we just had such a natural chemistry all, all of us together because we've been on the roads for so long, right. and we've done everything. Right. It's so it was just natural that we went together, and of course with Ace Steel, mm-hmm. um, who trained both of us. Mm-hmm. There you go, Second City Saints, Chicago. Uh, yeah. How did you guys wind up getting called up to Ring of Honor? Um, I, you know, our names were out there for so long and we were doing so many good things and people, you know, I think, you know, took notice and, uh, um, they started up, they, I, I saw Rob at a, a 3PW show mm-hmm. and he asked for a tape and, you know, he said he, he heard such great things and he wanted, he wanted us to be part of the show and then a year, a year went by and I was like, yeah, you know. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, Punk got a call and they were talking how they wanted to bring us in for so long. But, you know, they had so many storylines and so much. They had to finish storylines right. and then start new ones. And that's a show of a, of a great promotion. Right. Not just bing, bing, bing and storylines. Yeah. Know, they, yeah. They had plans for, right. for Punk and Cabana. And, uh, but, you know, it was like eight months down the line. And, and, you know, it was weird they never told us, but... Right, right, right. <laughs> so, you know, but I wasn't turning it down, and I don't think Punk was either. Yeah, yeah. well, well the, the old favorite is, oh, we have plans, just hang on there. So yeah, probably yeah, believe exactly. Well, exactly. Yeah. And that was one of their things, too. They didn't want to speak a big game before, you know, mm-hmm. big bark, no bite. Now, a criticism of a lot of independent wrestling promotions uh, in the U.S. is that because they're geared, uh, because they're run by people mm-hmm. who are very inside, smart kind of fans, they're geared towards the inside fans, really, really hardcore fans. And because of that, it's not as accessible to just the mainstream Hulkamaniac type people. Do you think that the amount of knowledge which is required to appreciate some of the styles in Ring of Honor or other bigger U.S. indies actually keeps them from drawing in more of a mainstream audience? Well, it's interesting you say that. Uh, the goal of wrestling, you know, is obviously to sell tickets. And, and in Ring of Honor, it's like kind of to sell videotapes. Right. But... Uh, you want to bring in the casual fan, and that's the most important thing. And Ring of Honor, and I'm just going to speak from Ring of Honor's kind of point of view, is, is that they have such a great product that when they bring in a casual fan and they bring in the Midnight Express, who maybe some older guys will remember, you know, right. not may, who older people remember, you know, back when they were kids. Well, let's go, wow, Midnight Express is coming. They're all four of them. Let's go watch them. And then all of a sudden they see the Ring of Honor product, and, it, and it's such an awesome thing that... Mm-hmm. It'll next time they're in town, we'll, they'll buy a Ring of Honor ticket, mm-hmm. and that's I think you know the idea is that yeah it's not you know Hulkamania blah blah blah, but if you come in and you watch it, or if your friend gives you a videotape or a DVD, 
and you see the product and and you know and you see Doug Williams you know doing crazy British stuff that no one's ever seen in the states before mm. or uh, Jack Evans doing you know flip day flips and Cole Cabana making somebody laugh then you know all of a sudden you know wow that's you know wow I'll pay my you know $15. So you think there's a broad enough uh, uh, appeal there? There's so much going on, and it's it's just such a all together. It's such a great package that right. You know, to, what you got to do is get the casual fan in the door, and and I think you know that's how you got to do it. You know how how you do it. That's up to the promoters or the advertisers. Right. And uh, but I think a great idea is some of these older guys coming in, especially Ring of Honor, Ricky Steamboat, Dusty Rhodes. You know, Abdul the Butcher was coming in, Midnight mm -hmm. Express, Jim Cornette's there with them. So. Mm -hmm. uh, and if not that, you know, then it's word of mouth, friends giving DVDs, you know, wearing T-shirts, you know, what's that? It's Ring of Honor. It's really cool. Check it out. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, come to my house. Eat some Oreos. That's how I interpret it, mm -hmm. how people would do it, because mm -hmm. Oreos are really good. Unless you break them and they're just frustrated. I'm not good with yeah, my hands. I just kind of chuck two in at a time. Well, well, there you go. You, yeah. see, you go for the heart of it. Hey. You take it out. Uh, speaking of going to the heart of it, you've also wrestled with uh, NWA TNA, which is now going for guts and glory. they got a big pay-per-view down in uh, uh, this coming November down in Florida. Uh, you've done some explosion dates. Is that your transition, the, the heart of it? Yeah. You see, I just, I just take whatever you say and I find a way. You see, Florida is kind of, for example, here. Where, here. where does the heart of it come here, into here's TNA? Where, here's where we're going. You see, first of all, NWA TNA, right? Okay. They're going for the heart of wrestling. You see, they're putting all their money in and they're going for it. Here's another one. You see, they're going to be in Florida, right? Now, Florida is the heart of the, the Gary election Hart? coming up. No, 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 no. The H-E-A-R-T. Gary Hart lives in Florida. Does he? Uh-huh. Do you have his number? I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind that. Doesn't matter. But the point is, is that NWTNA do have a pay per view coming up in November. You have worked with those guys before. Do you think you'll be back there? Have you any interest in working for those guys? Uh, man, I, I did one show for them. Uh, yeah, there's interest in, in wrestling for for NWATNA, and uh, you know, I hope maybe there's some interest on their part. And it's mm -hmm. just, uh, you know, it's kind of there's so much politics in wrestling and. Yeah. You, uh, you know, maybe one day you'll see Cole Cabana on there, maybe not. It's. Uh, do you think in that case the political climate uh, in Ring of Honor is better, that's more geared towards talent than who you know, than NWATNA perhaps? I, I really can't speak for NWATNA, you know. I, mm -hmm. I can speak for Ring of Honor, and, uh, you know, there's always politics in wrestling. I can't say it's too political there, It's because it is based on if you're a good wrestler, you're in, you know, if... If you're Mickey Mouse, you're out. You know that's how it works. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I would. That's all I can say. You know, I don't. Mm -hmm. I can't really speak for TNA. I, now, if you had the opportunity to go to WWE, yay or nay? Sure. Yeah. A lot of people working for the promotion right now are disgruntled because they don't feel that the storyline writing is up to par mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of people are frustrated because they don't feel momentum yeah um, is that something as someone sitting outside the company you're kind of thinking well you know you got a guaranteed contract you're making this amount of money deal with it or, or what would be well your, your I, I've heard people say you know uh, people outside of WWE saying how much uh, you know who would care if you know saying the exact same thing you're saying and then they they actually get there Mm -hmm. And then they're saying, you know, it, eh, I'm frustrated. So yeah. it's interesting that you say that. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I'd like, that's what I grew up watching kind of thing. I like to, you know, yeah. it's a full time. It's, uh, you know, there's structure there. There's kind of some, a guarantee, not a guarantee, you know, a little guarantee contract. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not saying that I love it. I don't know. You know, I don't know until something happens. But mm -hmm. it's a place I'd like to see myself. Hopefully, in the future. And if you a hypothetical for you, if you go in and uh, you're you're on the road, you're wrestling five minute matches a night instead of right now you're wrestling generally much longer matches right. than than WWE house show matches. And uh, who are you? I'm Colt Cabana. Who? Uh, uh, my name is, uh, oh, right, right, yeah, we're going to make you uh, a cue card guy. Your gimmick is that you hold a cue card and you come out, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, there you go. Uh, cue would you, card guy. Would, would you be happy to sort of go into that and throw away the character you've developed? Would you be happy enough to try something completely new, even if you didn't believe in it, well, just I've been for the chance? I've been thinking of a couple things, like uh, the world champion ping pong player. Um, uh, that would rank up there with Isaac Yankum, I think. Well, the Kool-Aid drinker. Mm. You know, the Oreo eater. I've mm. got plenty of them. So, 
you know, if they want to pitch something, one of those ideas, you know, I wouldn't want to do anything like a cue card guy. That's kinda... so, so, so what you're saying basically is no matter how bad their idea, you'll come up with the worst one and make sure it happens. The, uh, what do you mean the worst one? Um, I mean that I think your ideas are intriguing. Yeah, I would they're... subscribe to your newsletter. Oh, well, I appreciate that. And I'll send one to you if you give me your address. Uh, well, excellent. It's international postage, so I hope you know. I... Budget is not a problem, my friend. <laughs> and speaking of promotions you have worked for, uh, IWA Mid-South. We were on Ring of Honor a second ago. Fine. No, we were on WWE and TNA a second ago, promotions that I don't work for. Does it, but you did work for TNA. All right. I, okay, fine. My transitions have just been destroyed. I'm very distraught now. I, I'm, just, I'm just thinking of packing. Yeah, that, it's a big word, so that would be distraught. I was impressed. Okay, well, let, let's just simply simply go to IWA. Okay. Let's just head west and just zoom. Out we go. Sure. We're leaving New York. Zoom. We get on the road. Heading on over. Um, Ian Rotten, uh, you've worked there before. What do you think of working with the promotion? Uh, of course, he held gold there, which means the company in, has invested in you. Um, what do you think of working for them? Uh, that's where uh, that's where I you know I bit my nails. That's where I, I kind of made my my name, uh, understood who I was as a wrestler. Mm -hmm. I think it's where I really got my first time on the microphone. Where mm -hmm. I really got the first time to kind of do whatever I wanted, and I think that was kind of because he was like, do whatever you want. So. Which works well. Uh, I would go down there, you know, and again, like you said, like uh, like the territory, that, and that's where I would meet guys like Bull Payne and American Kickboxer, Tarek the Great, guys who have actually done the territories before they died out. Right. They were doing, like, there was Memphis and kick-ass wrestling down there. Um, so it was interesting talking to them and seeing how it worked, and especially at such a young age. So right. uh, Ian always gave me the opportunity to wrestle some some uh, of the better guys, mm -hmm. some of the people that have been around. Have, he has a locker room that is filled with people who understand wrestling. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was always a, a treat and a treasure and a, and a pleasure. And that rhymed. To, that, uh, that, that's, yes. You know, it's, and I'm a poet, but I do know it. So <laughs> it, it, was, it was awesome wrestling for Ian. Are, yeah. are you booking for my job? Am I what? No. Are you bucking for my job? Is Sitting there, just, just running bucking. me down, saying your poems. Oh, God, I'm disgusted. Is that an English word? Uh, no, it's not an English because word. Because in the States, bucking means something else. And I, I wouldn't climb the ladder like that, my friend. Again, after Sorry, 8 p.m. Blake. After 8 p.m., okay. Uh, Ian Rotten's style is very different to yours. It's very hardcore. Right. Um, uh, speaking of after 8 p.m., uh, and there, see, ha 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 ha! I got you with that yeah, one. Like that was it. appropriate. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Now we're we're all like we're this. on the right path. That's it. That's it. Uh, do you mind that style? Or would you be if someone said, okay, you're in a, a TLC match, we want you to rip yourself apart, you know, every night? Yeah. Is that something you go for? No, I'd probably punch him in the face. Really? Not the person in the ring. The, no, the, uh, <laughs> Whoever told you to. Well, TLC to. is completely different from uh, a Taipei uh, death on nails running over with a train match. You know, it's... A TLC, uh, there could be meaning to it. Um, no, don't get me wrong. Uh, there is mm -hmm. meaning to, you know, a Taipei death match. and uh, But it's kind of one end of the extreme to the other. Right. Um, I've done chairs. I've done tables. I, I don't mind mixing it up with that. Mm. Uh I have no desire to do a Taipei death match, a barbed wire match, a thumbtack match, right. you know, uh, shoot me in the face nine times match. That's just not my thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Do I like watching it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, like I'll be honest, watching these people kill themselves is kind of uh, amusing to me. You know, it, for my entertainment, I, I appreciate it, but. But it's not something you personally not something would, I wanted would to, endeavor no. to do. No. Uh, do, do you find that expectations while you're over here in England are different upon you? That that you won't see that style of match. You'll see it more, or uh, I've seen a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean? Like when you're over here, like in the states, obviously. I mean, a lot of cards these days are very set. Okay, you guys are having the technical match. Okay. You guys are having the high flying. You guys are gonna bleed all over the place right. and stuff, pigs. Right. Uh, is it the same kind of thing over here, or or is it more traditional wrestling? Do you I think, find? Well, what I've been on it is uh, you know kind of traditional wrestling. You know, with FWA. Um, they they kind of go around the, the spectrum a lot. They kind of have yeah. different aspects, and which is it's cool uh, because they're not uh, they're catering to a different audience than uh, than some of the other promotions. So, right. Um, again, and that's the same way it is in the states. I guess there's different promotions that cater to different people. Yeah. So it just you know it depends on the cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the people you know the, the 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 fans are different and the wrestlers are different. 
but there's always going to be you know promotions that just cater to who they want to cater to mm -hmm. and that's the audience they want and that's the same thing you know you're not trying to get well, you might be catering to old ladies, but you know, I I think your demographic is eighteen to thirty four. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. So that's yeah. what you're going for, and mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to be showing the Care Bears, you know, versus the Flintstones in a wrestling match. So mm -hmm. I'd pay to see that, but I, I want to see your tape collection. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I, it's a good one. <laughs> well, on the topic of T, uh, FWA, you had a match with uh, Johnny Storm, a friend of ours, a couple of weeks ago. Sure. Uh, how'd you like the match, and how'd you like working for the FWA? Oh uh, man, I love working for FWA. Uh, Johnny Storm, I got to wrestle him twice. Actually, I wrestled him up in BCW in Scotland. Right. And uh, I got to wrestle uh, him in FWA at the, at the big show. I think mm -hmm. it was Hotwired, right? Yep. Yeah, and uh, it was it was a blast. Johnny's a, an international competitor. He's a world class uh, competitor. He's a world class wrestler. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did some good things. I think the people enjoyed it, mm -hmm. and that's what's important. And I enjoyed myself, and I think he enjoyed himself. So. Mm -hmm. and do what do you find is the difference? Do you prefer working a guy who, because you're a pretty big guy for, for the, the territory uh, indie type scene. You're six foot one, you know, a pure muscle, I'm sure. Yes. Um, uh, do you prefer working, working guys your size or taller, or do you prefer working the smaller guys? Because Johnny is physically yeah, smaller. Than yeah, yeah. So honestly, uh, man, I, honestly, I prefer, I, I'll wrestle anybody. I love wrestling everybody. Uh, I kind of tend to go with the, the smaller guys. Mm -hmm. um, because I can, you know, I, I'm there. I can, I can move with them for being a bigger guy, and, and right. it kind of works out well for me. Uh, where people will say, "Wow, you know, it's six foot one, two hundred forty pounds." Or, I'm sorry, six foot one, sixteen stones, fourteen, two times. rocks. I I I can't carry add. the one, add a pebble. Yeah. <laughs> so and it, you know, it makes me look better that I, that uh, mm. that I can go with those guys. Mm. At least I like to think that I can. So right. um, there's different ways to do it. So you know, with with a bigger guy, you kind of have to tone it down a little. You can't do some of the stuff right. because then you'll just get sad on or something. Like, right. You know. So. Right. Mm. Uh, your name was brought up on Raw last week. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> was that something you knew about in advance? Were you sitting there going, "Hey, uh, man, you're, I, I heard about you on Raw." Yeah. Um, if anyone wants to go back and watch Raw, what's it, October 4th, or? What, was it this Monday? It was past Monday, so Friday over here. Yeah, yeah, something. so it was, just, it was just past Friday. It was that past Thursday's episode. Yeah, I, a Steel pulled what you would call a rib in uh, WWE, so uh, if you want to know my real name, go and watch that. <laughs> yeah, you, you see how I've tiptoed around your real name for this whole show, and yet, yes. you know, 300,000 people saw it last Thursday anyway. There so. you go, well, there you go. So, uh, okay, what, what is coming up next for you in England right now? Uh, well, I'm always on, uh, on tour with uh, Brian Dixon's All-Star Wrestling. Right, right. Uh, I've been wrestling for FCW over in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. um, I did wrestle for IPW UK. They had their first show. Uh, I'm going to Germany, German Stampede Wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, and then at the, that's at the end of the month. Right. Uh, I'm also doing... Uh, in November, I'm, the begin, first of November, I'm doing uh, BCW in Scotland again, mm -hmm. and uh, that's kind of my upcoming schedule. Mm -hmm. um, also upcoming will be uh, Uprising 3, November 13th. That's right. That's FWA. Right. FWA, baby. So uh, be there, you know. I'm not sure if I'm going to be there or not, but uh, mm -hmm. I recommend that everyone at home should. Right, right. So, yeah. Well, definitely, if they don't make it in person, I'll see it right here in the wrestling channel. Yeah, that's right. And uh, just, just making sure we get those FWE bookings down the line. It's November 13th, by the way. <laughs> and it's uprising. You, when you go back to the States, uh, what, what's going to be next for you? Are you going to be straight back with Ring of Honor? Or? Yeah, uh, the Big Juice and Thunder Lager show. That's right, that's right, November 5th and 6th, yeah. Uh, Ring of Honor, uh, Pro Wrestling Gorilla. I'm doing some stuff for uh, MRW and uh, Kansas City. It's kind of... Uh, just kind of, you know, local uh, independent shows. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just travel in the loop like I always do. I'll be in Chicago. Come If you're in Chicago, come say hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll mm -hmm. probably be at a uh, Cubs game. Mm -hmm. so. Now, some of the guys, uh, before I let you go here, who, who uh, TWC fans have seen a lot on the channel, uh, I want to ask your opinion of them because you've worked with them a lot. First of all, one of our favorites uh, wrestled Doug Williams quite a lot and, in fact, uh, took that FWA title over to Ring of Honor, uh, Christopher Daniels. Sure. How you found working with him? Uh, I love wrestling with Chris. 
he's a class act. He's been around wrestling for so long. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that water hot? I don't know. Uh, you know, he's been around England a lot too, and uh, like him and AJ and all these guys are just a pleasure to work with. Mm -hmm. And they know what they're doing, and they're they're veterans. So. Yeah. Another guy is Raven, who uh, in his own interview that we saw here a few weeks ago comes from the school of do as little as you can, which is completely the polar opposite. It seems to me that most guys coming up are are trying to do as many flips as they can, whereas Raven sort of takes pride in doing as little as possible while keeping the fans into the match. Do you think? that up-and-coming wrestlers have a lot to learn from veterans such as Raven? Well, it's like Raven's been along for so long and he was back in the territories too, you know, you can't forget that. Mm -hmm. So uh, he comes from kind of the old school theory of kind of do as little as you can, yeah. get the most out of it. Uh, yes, I think everyone should be kind of trained the old school theory. Mm -hmm. And then if you want, you know, like AJ and Chris, and, and uh, a lot of these guys, and I'm not going to put you know, myself in the same, but I'm just saying, like, we were all trained old school theory first, you know, know how to do the basics, know how to do everything like that, and then pick it up, you know all what right. I'm saying? I, you know, I didn't do much, anything really flashy in the first couple, first one, two years. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, you know, I started picking it up because I knew what the people wanted, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think Raven has, has a strong idea. I don't think it's... If he's against doing all of that stuff, you know, if he's against doing like the high tempo, the you know, high, high spot, yeah, high impact. you know, there's the industry is changing. I, I don't know really his views on that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously what he does works for him and it works for him well because he's a great wrestler. He knows mm -hmm. what he's doing. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not against. You know, I'm not against the high spots and the high action. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, and I am for. Uh, the old school theory of how to do stuff, yeah. You were injured recently, and uh, something I'd like to ask of, of our guests is when you sustain an injury that puts you on the shelf, A, how hard is it to stay out of action and not get straight back to the gym and, and further hurt yourself? And B, does that make you think about, hmm, how long is my career going to be? You know, should I start thinking about that? Yeah, well, it's interesting. Is, uh, I mean, I was injured, I'd say it was like August, mm -hmm. and I, I totally tore my shoulder, and mm -hmm. I wrestled till October. Until I, until I said, hey, I, I got to start. Because business-wise, my body was starting to look bad. Right. I couldn't hit the gym. Um, I said to myself, okay, I got to take two months off. Right. right. And I knew that it would fix itself. And nothing in my head really went, you know, wow, how long is this going to go? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to ride this out as much as I can. Uh, but it does, it gives you an idea that we're not supermen. Mm -hmm. That stuff does happen. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful, and the same thing goes with uh, the Raven theory. Right, is that you know, if you're going to be wrestling, especially in Britain here, five six times a week, you know, uh, Huracan Super Rana punches might not be happening every night. Might but if you could tell, yeah, if you could tell a good story and you could be, uh, you know, a professional wrestler and do right. it your best, the people will still like you and they'll enjoy your stuff. Right. Yeah. Well, fans over here in the UK and Ireland have certainly enjoyed your work to date. Uh, we look forward to seeing you more on the wrestling channel, uh, Ring of Honor, and uh, hopefully we'll see you upcoming in TNA as well because we have seen you on Explosion. Uh, Colt Cabana, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you here on the back of the report. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. And uh, that's it. <laughs>
I think we've mentioned a couple of times before, there's always been rumors about ECW ever since it folded in 2001, about ECW coming back in WWE, and for a while it almost did. Uh, but as far as I know, Matt, I don't think this is going to happen anytime soon. Of course, we all remember that back in 2000, Taz actually won the ECW belt while he was a WWF wrestler, and actually brought the belt with him on Raw and on SmackDown. In fact, he had a champion versus champion match with Triple H. However, at the time, WWE didn't really see ECW as a competitor, and ECW was still going full and strong. I don't think Vince McMahon at this point in the game is interested in bringing back a belt that's been gone for more than three years. Matt in Northern Ireland would like to know, why are there no WCW pay-per-view videos or ECW videos for sale anymore? And do you think Triple H should turn babyface and team up with Shawn Michaels to reform DX? Well, the first question about WCW and ECW videos is simply that because neither promotion's around anymore, I don't think there's that great a demand. If there was a great demand, I think WWE, who owns the collections, would be making quite a bit of money off them. In fact, last time I checked, uh, uh, Killer Cobbs brought me down to a place down in Cork City, and they're selling off ECW pay-per-views for like three bucks a pop. So a lot of places I know that still have the tapes are getting rid of them cheap, which probably means they're not that popular right now. In terms of Triple H and Shawn Michaels reforming DX, I think it's very unlikely. Two reasons. First of all, DX had its run, and at the time it made a lot of sense and it was fun. And remember when Triple H entered DX, he was a whole uh, Hunter Hearst Helmsley character, and he was very high and pristine and posh. People weren't quite into it. And uh, it really did a lot for his character to join DX and become that cool character. Now he's evolved again, and he's following that Ric Flair kind of style, and he's wearing the suits, and he's doing something new. I don't think he's about to turn around and do something different, especially something with Shawn Michaels when they've got such a heated and storied rivalry. The following email comes from Big Dave in Northern Ireland, who writes, Yo, Blake. Love the show. It's one of the best things on TV. Thanks a lot, Dave. Appreciate that. My question is, is Goldberg going to join another business, uh, or probably wrestling company? I've heard he's, going to, uh, he's doing some in Japan, but do you think he might go to TNA? Or maybe if the rumors are true, Ted Turner is starting up again, maybe he'll join them. Well, I would doubt that Goldberg's going to be in TNA for one simple reason. Goldberg doesn't really like wrestling. Um, he likes making a living, he likes making money, but uh, based on any account that he's ever given for uh, ever since he entered the business in 97, he's not that big a fan of it. So I don't think he'd go to TNA where the, the money wouldn't be that great, the exposure wouldn't be that great, and it wouldn't make sense for TNA to pay th a hand over fist to bring Goldberg in when they could only afford to bring him in for a couple of shows. What's the use in that? So I think that's unlikely. Um, in terms of a new Ted Turner, Turner organization, if Turner does start up again, wouldn't surprise me, because if Turner has the money, then uh, I think Goldberg will have a place to go. We want to buy your love right here at the Bagpipe Report. If you're not going to watch the great guests, the great news, the great stars, and uh, the hilarious commentary, watch because they're going to give you free stuff. The WrestlingChannel.tv slash shop has got tons of great stuff from all over the world, all the top wrestling promotions. You can win 200 pounds of it right now, you jammy gits. All you have to do is answer one very, very simple question. Who is the mouth of the South? Is it Jimmy Rave? Is it Jimmy Hart? Or is it Hacksaw Jim Duggan? So it's A for Jimmy Rave, B for Jimmy Hart, C for Hacksaw Jim Duggan. So you're going to text your answer, Blake A, Blake B, or Blake C, to 88066 to be in with a chance to win tons of great stuff. Closing deadline for this is this coming Thursday night at midnight, so get texting. Now let's check out some of the upcoming shows right here in the UK and Ireland. There's going to be a joint show between the FCW and WAR promotions. They come together to present Conflict on Saturday the 23rd of October. The Ultimate Wrestling Alliance is a show in the Prince's Theatre on the 28th of October. Check out Revolution British Wrestling on Saturday the 23rd of October in Hertfordshire. Premier Promotions presents Wrestling Spectacular in the Worthing Assembly Hall on Monday the 25th of October. Then on Tuesday the 26th they'll be in Potter's Bar. IWW has a five day tour of Ireland coming up. First it's back to back dates Friday the 22nd of October and Saturday the 23rd in County Down. On Sunday the 24th of October, they're going to have a matinee show in Kildare. That evening, they're going to be in Dublin. Finally, on Monday the 25th of October, they'll be in County Leash. And you've been hearing about it for weeks. The Frontier Wrestling Alliance presents British Uprising 3 at the Coventry Skydome on Saturday, November 13th. 
We have a dynamite week coming up for you. You want wrestling, you keep it right here for seven days of high impact insanity. Let's kick it off. In NWA TNA, the high flying, amazing, death defying Red takes on Sanjay Dutt. Then the phenomenal AJ Styles goes one on one with the hardcore icon, the former ECW heavyweight champion Raven, and this one's for the heavyweight championship of the world. Then we take it on down to Memphis, Tennessee. Kid Cash takes on Johnny Dodson, and the sexy assassins take on the Infernos. Then we head to CZW, Fake UTV, as Adam Flash takes on Ian Knox, and Homicide takes on the Hardcore Messiah. And don't forget this coming Monday night, we've got a shoot interview. It's one of the all-time greats. It's Bam Bam Bigelow. Hear him talk about his amazing history in professional wrestling, from the main event of WrestleMania to WCW, WWF, ECW Heavyweight Champion, much, much more. That has been another 60 minutes of news and information, courtesy of the Bagpipe Report. Check out the WrestlingChannel.tv for your forums, your news, your upcoming shows, updates, stores, a whole lot more, and the BagpipeReport.com. Check out all the stuff we're doing right here, interviews, and a whole lot more. You guys have a great week. We'll see you back here, 8 p.m., Friday night, on the Wrestling Channel for the bagpipe.